everyone welcome you all to the second part of my talk and here i'm going to discuss about a glance at process of uh, drug discovery and i'll sharing my screen and hope it is uh, visible to all of you okay yeah so uh, I'll start with the, this uh, one of the, you know, saying by Sir William Hostler rightly pointed out that medicine is a science of uncertainty and art of probability. Before I will uh, start uh, explaining about the glance of drug discovery, I think I don't know how many of you are from biology and how many of you are from other field of science or uh, other subjects. But I would like to tell you just few things about basic component before we enter to drug discovery uh, about the human genome. Everybody knows that in 2003, all the human genome, I mean, human genome project was completed and few important, uh, you know, take home message was like, um, human genome consists of 3 billion base pairs. It contains approximately 25,000 unique genes. Each genes may have 10 to 100 variants uh, through alternate splicing. Any genes or its product can be, you know, potential drug targets. And besides that, it is also important to understand uh, basically the central dogma of uh, biology or you can say the central dogma of life basically the information flow you can see in the picture here you know information flow is basically uh, uh, is an organism takes place from dna you know dna uh, to rna to protein okay and DNA dictate the structure of mRNA in a process known as transcription. And RNA dictate the structure uh, of proteins, which is known, that process is known as translation. And this is known as the central dogma of life, which holds true for all organisms. You know, and uh, you know, if you understand that any of the proteins may be the target, right? So the question is in at which you know a state a stage of the protein structure is you know functional so if you see protein structure protein have you know four different level uh, that is the primary secondary and ter uh, tertiary and quaternary structure the basically tertiary and quaternary structure are basically the functional form of the protein structure now many people may ask what is the function of you know proteins Biologists know well, but still many people also knows. But just I just giving you, uh, you know, a little bit brief about it. You know, the protein plays a very major role in our body. For example, nowadays in COVID day, everybody know about what is immunity, what is antibody. You know, so basically, antibody is also a type of proteins which binds to a specific foreign particles such as viruses, bacteria, and you know, to help and protect our body. Everybody knows about enzyme. Enzyme is also a type of protein. You know, enzymes carry out almost all the, all the you know, thousands of chemical reactions that takes place in our cells. They also assist with the formation of new molecules by reading the genetic information stored in DNA. Protein also plays as a messenger. You know, messenger proteins such as you know some types of hormones transmit signals to coordinate biological processes between different cells tissues and organs, a structural component, you know, a protein also acts as, you know, a structural component. These proteins provide a structure, a structure and support for cells. On larger scale, they also allow body to move. Protein also have an important role in transport and storage. These proteins bind and carry atoms and small molecules within the cells and throughout the body. So, what is the traditional, you know, drug development? Everybody knows that basically traditional drug development are basically plant-derived natural products 
were used as source of medicine. Very good example is foxglove used to treat congestive heart failures. Other sources was, you know, accidental observations. I think uh, most of you must be aware about the discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming. So therefore, I'm not going to discuss much detail about those discoveries and stories. But now come to the drug designing in present day and especially using the in silico techniques. You know, inventive process to find a new medicine, medicine for treating a disease based on knowledge of biological targets, you know. The, uh, you know, uh, the designed drug should have at least these following characters. It should be complementary to the target. It should interact and bind to the target and it should activate or inhibit function of the target. You know, so these important characteristics should be there of any when you are talking about any drugs. If you see the workflow for designing and developing a drug, first important part is you should know what is the disease. So human disease, to know the human disease, number one. Then you should go for identifying the protein which involved in that particular disease. You know, sometimes to find the correct protein that itself will take two to five, five years. Once you are able to identify those proteins, then you have to screen the test compounds or test material or drugs, whether in silico or in the laboratory, you know, and then you have to screen those library, you have to find out after experimentation, you have to, you know, come out with the, or identify the potential drug compounds. Here I'm talking about computer added drug designing. So definitely we're talking about the in silico library screening. That, you know, that also sometimes take two to five years. Even if you are identify some important targets, now you have to go for synthesis of those molecules. Then you go, you, can, you should go for preclinical testing. That also will take you one to three years. If you pass those preclinical pretty, pretty testing, then you should go for formulations. When you are you are ready with the formulation, then you should go for clinical trials. If you are successful in clinical trials, you know this is very important step, and sometimes it will take very long time and even up to ten years is reported. And then, after you know passing this phase, then you go for FDA approval that again take two to three years. So overall, if you see, to reach drug into the market successfully may take 15 to 20 years. And it's a, you know, approximate cost is, uh, will be $880 million. Amazing. So, but with the help of computer added drug design or in silico drug designing, the cost also reduces and it is also time efficient. You know, rapidly growing areas in the field of drug discovery, explosion of bioinformatics, chemoinformatics, you know, you know ge uh, genom uh, genomics, proteomics, structural information has, you know, added in growth of this. Field. In in silico drug design, uses computational methods and resources to facilitate future drug-led discovery. This provide time efficient and cost effective method of drug discovery. If you see the complete pipeline, so I have already told you, like when you talk about disease-related genomics or, uh, or target identification, here is, you know, requirement of bioinformatics, bioinformatics, reverse stocking, protein structure prediction, you know, when we talk about target validation, you have the target drugability, you know, tool compound design, talk about lead discovery, again, library design, docking, docking scoring, de novo design, pharmacophore, you know, target flexibility. To talk about lead optimization, you have to know, you should know the QSAR, 3D QSAR, the structure-based optimization in silico admit prediction. 
you know, all these tools and techniques require some software, right? So here again, there is a avenues. So you should design your own tools and techniques to, you know, make it uh, much easier and, you know, more, uh, you know, accurate, you know, predictions. And uh, basically, if you pass all the, I, I, I have told you, so when you go for the screening, you, there is two, you know, two type of screen, virtual screen, virtual screen, two type. One is either you should go ligand based or you should go structure based, you know, uh, uh, this virtual screening. So if you go for the, uh, what, do, what is basically, some people ask, what is the ligand based drug design? So ligand based drug design is an approach used in the absence of receptors, 3D information. And it relies on the knowledge of molecules that bind to biological targets, target biological target of interest. 3D quantitative structure activity relationship, in short we said 3D QSAR, and pharmacophore modeling are the most important and widely used tool in ligand-based drug design. And they can provide predictive models suitable for lead identification and optimization. Second type is structure-based uh, virtual screening. Here, structure-based drug design is an approach where uh, structured information of the drug targets for the development of its inhibitor. Receptor structure is a prerequisite for this method. Most commonly, uh, um, uh, most commonly, the structure of the receptor is determined by experimental techniques such as X-ray crystallography or NMR. If the structure of the protein drug target is not available, protein structure can be predicted by you know computational methods like threading and homology modeling. Threading, you know, also called sometimes fold, is a modeling approach used to model proteins that do not have homologous proteins which known, with known structure, you know. And during threading, a given amino acid sequence is searched for compatibility with a structure in database of known folds. The structure of the query protein is built from these folds and homology modeling is also known as, you know, comparative. is an approach that relies on a clear relationship or homology between sequence of the target protein and at least one known structure. So, you know, after that, drug like lead compound, toxicity, and ADME, you know, techniques, and again, re-ranking all those, you know, the uh, screened molecules, and then you can go. You can go for compound selection, and then you can go for you know in vitro assays. And after that, you can go for you know uh, the other steps. What I have already told you, although it is repetition, but I should say again, like I told you, DG selection is very important first step of you know uh, when you start designing any molecules. First important is to select disease of the interest. Then determine by on basis of the disease. Then study exact states in the pathway involved in the normal and altered disease states. The next step is to elucidate the regulatory molecules involved in regulation of the pathway. Then the target identification and selection. You know, once the target in the biochemical proce process has been selected, one would retrieve 3D structure of the target molecules from protein uh, PDB sites. Then, you know, uh, downloaded from the protein data bank, data bank categories of this target. You know, there are different categories. Enzymes, receptors, other proteins, nucleic acids, you know. So I have already explained you what is the ligand based, what is the structure based. So I'm skipping those slides, or okay, just I'll mention one line. Like uh, I told you, the ligand is a molecules that has ability to bind and form complexes with other biomolecules in order to perform biological processes. Example here is acetylamide, 
uh, diuretic drugs. You can see in the, you know, here you can see uh, in uh, slides, the process of selection of ligand is known as lead identification. A screening for natural products, semi-synthetic or synthetic compound liability is carried out to the screen for lead compounds. And then comes the, you know, target that will going to bind the ligands and they will form the complex, right? So this is very important. And then whether the binding is perfect or not, you know, uh, so how to, you know, evaluate the binding, uh, you know, score. So for that, and uh, to, to, to have, you know, better uh, confidence level, you know, so you have to go for the molecular simulation. Simulation means imitation, you know, means the imitation of the situation. Right? When drug molecules interact with the target, how, you know, what are the parameters, how they will behave, how it will react. So molecular simulation means capturing the behavior of the proteins or the biomolecules in their full atomic details and at, you know, very high resolution. Application of the molecular simulations are, you know, I'm giving you three points here, deciphering the functional mechanism of the protein biomolecules uncovering the structure basis of the disease and designing the optimization of small molecules, peptides, or proteins. So ADME properties is important analysis and predict this ADME analysis plays a major role in drug designing because these properties are crucial for success of the drugs in uh, clinical phases, you know. Nowadays, ADME analysis is performed in, you know, early phases of the drug development to remove compound with poor ADME properties. But, you know, I have told you like very important uh, in the application of the, uh, you know, CAD, but there are limitations. Like biological system poses flexibility and, gov and are governed by, you know, several significant parameters. Similarly, Proteins and lesions are highly flexible in the solution due to formation of the different conformation. Owing to the great complexity, you know, uh, it is not possible to copy and simulate an entire real biological system on a computer system. But still, simulation is, you know, great help. Right, so this I have already discussed, so I'm skipping these slides. And, but yeah, just here I'm just mentioning, uh, you know, each and every step you can see whether identifying the disease, isolating the proteins or finding the drugs or preclinical testing. In between them, you can see find the error and you can see find the different area where we need to design and develop new tools to analyze those data, predict these, uh, you know, results better form, you know, like genomics, proteomics, bioinformatics, high throughput screening, virtual screening, every, although there are a lot of tools and techniques are available, but still there is a scope of improvement and come out with new tools and techniques. So drug designing, uh, you know, uh, and uh, development is multidisciplinary, you know, process and co uh, complex process. Modern conventional drug designing approach makes this process, I told you, very, you know, almost 50% time as well as cost. Identification of the new, safe, effective drug requires proper integration of new promises, techniques, and strategies. So it's the end of my second part. I will, uh, in the third part, I'll discuss about some of the examples uh, from um, our own lab. Thank you.